everyone. Happy Tuesday and happy So What Day. We are one week away from July 4. It's exciting. I'm pulling out all the red, white, and blue. I still have um, my little garden flag up from Flag Day. I don't know if you're supposed to take that down, but I kept it up at any rate. So I hope that you all have your red, white, and blue ready for next week. We will still be live streaming on July 4. So if you are prepping for a barbecue, hanging out, taking your day off, you can check us out next Tuesday right here as well. Let me know where you're watching from in the comments. And if you're watching on Facebook, YouTube, or Twitch, we have a great giveaway today. I'm dropping stuff. We have a great giveaway today, as always, uh, during our So What's, we give something fabulous away. And I'm trying to upload a picture of it. Um, I was having some troubles doing that today, so bear with me while I find our giveaway. But we're going to be talking about our road trip machine embroidery collection today. And let's see, I'm buffering a little bit too, so I'm just going to kind of organize myself and close some things. You know, when you get started working in the morning, you have like 30 windows open. Well, when I'm preparing this, uh, so what, I have a lot of things to sift through and sometimes I just run out of time to close it all and it makes things run a little bit um, slowly, we'll say. So now I'm getting everybody's comments. Hello, everyone. Hi, Joyce. Hi, Heidi, Bev. All right. We are moving and shaking now. All right. So speaking of our giveaway, we're going to be talking about, as I mentioned, our road trip machine embroidery collection. And if I could find it here to show you, that would be great since that's what we're talking about today. All right. Here we go. So this collection has six designs in it, and they're all road trip themed. There's a little camper, there's a s'mores design, which is what we're going to talk about today. Um, all kinds of things. Let me see. Here we go. Now I can show it to you. So sorry for being so disorganized. At least I think I can. <laughs> what is happening today? Thanks for bearing with me, everybody. It feels kind of like a Monday, even though it's Tuesday. <laughs> All right, here's our road trip collection. So we have Adventure Awaits. That's a little camper design. Explore more, take a hike, great outdoors, road trip, and s'more time. So this is our giveaway today for one lucky viewer who is watching, commenting, sharing out our live stream today. That's all you need to do. Somehow engage with the post. You can even give me those great emojis, thumbs up, hearts, all those good things, and you will be automatically eligible to win our Road Trip Machine Embroidery Collection. Now, this collection is also available as a palette, which means it comes with six spools of sulky thread. So you'll have all the thread that you need to create these really cute designs. These are great for camp outs, for summer camp, if you have any little ones, grandkids, kids, nieces, nephews, going off to summer camp, you can embroider maybe their sleeping bag or their overnight bag or a little uh, toiletry pouch for you know all of their um, toothbrushes, sunscreen, all of that good stuff with a cute little design and maybe some personalization. So what I'm going to show you how to make today is a little drawstring bag. Well, it's actually rather large. Um, a drawstring bag that you can use to create a little s'mores kit. Um, I find when we are going camping or heading out to a bonfire or something, of course, everybody wants a s'more. And it's kind of cumbersome to grab all of those things, your marshmallows, your candy bars, your graham crackers. And of course, you need two different flavors because now they have cinnamon graham crackers and chocolate graham crackers and all that good stuff. And of course, we want all the varieties. So I thought, why not create a little drawstring pouch 
You can stuff all that stuff in there and grab it all together when you are ready for s'more time. All right, so it would also make a great overnight bag. Like I mentioned, if you have little ones going off to summer camp or even just for a sleep overnight, and you can just choose a different design for the drawstring bag. So I'm gonna go over the simple construction of the bag and then you can personalize it however you wish. Now, before we get started, I have some housekeeping things just to make you aware. Our trip to London with Craft Tours is going to close for registrations in a couple of weeks. So you only have a couple of weeks to let them know you're interested, get on the list, make sure there's a spot for you because only a few spots remain. We will close this tour. It's a small group so that we can all stay together on one bus when we're going to our different excursions every day. So if you are thinking about it, if you've been on the fence, now is the time to take that leap and give them a call and get on the list so that you can enjoy our trip to London with us. I did hear from a couple of people over the weekend who signed up um, and they're super excited. They had a couple of questions for me, so we chit chatted and I think we're gonna have a great time together. So make sure if you are interested in that, I did put the link that goes directly to our Craft Tours tour at the bottom of the description of today's post. So in order to see everything I'm talking about today, including the link for this tour, click on the little see more button on the description and the whole thing will pop out. You'll see a link for all the featured products I'm gonna talk about today. Um, it just occurred to me, I may have forgotten the link to the full drawstring bag tutorial, but we will put this in the comments and you'll be able to get the whole tutorial as well for the drawstring bag um, so that you don't have to take notes and all of these good things during today's So What. All right, so if you do have questions about this London tour, uh, we are going to be shopping at Liberty of London Fabrics. I can hardly wait. And we are going to go to some Downton Abbey locations. So I'm going to have to start streaming so I can get all caught up on Downton Abbey. We're also going to do a Harry Potter exhibit and so much more. We're going to see Stonehenge. We're going to do all the touristy things. And we're going to do a hands-on sewing class together. So we're going to make a commemorative project um, that will remind us of our trip and It'll be something we can also do on our longer bus rides for certain things. So um, it's going to be great to come together, meet new people, and you will make friends for life, I guarantee you. So please, please join us in London. All right, another exciting thing at sulky.com that I wanted to share with you is we have some new products that have some of our really great uh, sulky designs on them. So I wanted to share those with you because they're brand new at sulky.com. They make great gifts for yourself or for your sewing friends. So first up is we have some new phone cases and you can personalize them with our sewing is my jam design. This is our very popular in the hoop patch design that we've been offering. We also have it as a sticker. Um, it's a great removable sticker for a water bottle, even for your sewing machine, for your laptop, doesn't create any residue. But instead of a sticker, it's printed right onto your phone case. Isn't this cute? So mine is for my particular phone. I just got it. So I haven't been able to put my phone inside, but. I need a new case anyway, so I'm super excited that mine um, speaks to, you know, my love of sewing. So cute. All right, so you can get yours for the phone make and model that you have. You just select that at checkout at sulky.com. Also, I got myself a laptop case because I have a laptop bag and it has this little flimsy sort of 
pouch for a laptop and I'm always thinking it's just not good enough. So I got a laptop case with our brand new no one needs to know design. Isn't this cute? So it's kind of a cheeky nod to using our seam ripper. As you can see, the little heart on the bottom has been sewn wrong and is getting its stitches ripped out. So it's crying. It's very sad. And then the heart at the top is the one um, after, you know, we have re-sewn it, right? And no one needs to know. <laughs> I love it. So this is my new laptop case and it's neoprene. So it's really great quality. And on the inside is this really great faux fur. So great protection for your device and you get to personalize it with a great design as well. So love it. And then another thing, I happen to love these for the summer because sometimes you just need a little lightweight hoodie when you're out at the campfire having your s'mores, trying to protect yourself from those pesky mosquitoes that we're all getting because of all this rain and whatnot. So at any rate, I have a lightweight hoodie and I have the sewing is my jam design on the back of my hoodie. Isn't that cute? I love it. I would wear it right now, but it's already hot. Hot as blazes down here in my studio, but it's nice and lightweight, has a hood, fits really nice, um, and has the design on the back, of course. We also have t-shirts that have the design on the front. We've got some tote bags, so you can decide how you want to display your cute sewing is my jam design and the no one needs to know design. So really cute stuff, brand new at sulky.com. I think you will all love it. And as we get into the holiday season, I know, don't crucify me. How can I be speaking of holidays already? <laughs> well, you know, we're already prepping for Christmas in July and all those things. And as sewers and quilters and crafters and creators, we need all the time we can get to make sure that we can sew all of our gifts and home decor and all of that. So I already kind of have it on the brain. And I got to tell you, I was at Joanne Fabrics um, just yesterday, in fact, and they have three aisles of Halloween. Seriously. So that got my juices flowing as well. Creative juices, that is. All right. So back to summer. Let's enjoy summer while we have it. And let's dive in to our drawstring bag project. So here is what our little drawstring bag looks like with our personalized design s'more time. And I have it here, you can see it is rather large because I wanted it to fit, you know, a whole box of graham crackers, a whole bag of marshmallows, you know, full size candy bars. We're not, when it comes to s'mores, you gotta go all out, right? So um, it's fully lined and it has this great drawstring that you can just cinch up. So as I mentioned, it makes a really great overnight bag or summer camp bag um, if you want to give it as a gift as well. All right. So I must confess as well, the tutorial on the Sulky blog, which is blog.sulky.com, uh, it says to use quilting cotton fabric for the lining of the bag. And I must confess that I used flannel. And the only reason I used flannel is because I found the cutest little s'mores print and I could not pass it up. See how it has the little campfire that looks exactly like our campfire? It was meant to be. And these cute little s'mores motifs. So you might get lucky and find a s'mores themed print um, or even a camping print, something like that in the quilting cotton uh, fabric department. But I found this in the flannels and I just couldn't resist. So mine is lined with flannel. Um, as you know, not recommended for things like children's wear a lot of the times. Sometimes they say it's extra flammable. 
Um, it all depends on the coating and how it's made and all of that good stuff. So keep those things in mind, especially when you're making something that is going to be used near a campfire. Okay. So I was a little bit irresponsible and fell in love with the fabric motif, but I'm going to keep mine far away from the raging fire um, and just tote my s'mores stuff <laughs> um, on the side. So Connie is asking, where did you find the flannel? I actually found it at Joanne Fabrics um, in the like children's flannel department. So it it's here, I'll turn it totally inside out. And actually this project is kind of reversible. I mean, your, your drawstring ties would be on the inside, um, but look how cute it is from just the lining side. I know, I just fell in love with it. So at any rate, it would make a cute little snuggly blanket or even um, some, you know, shorts or something like that. All right, back to the project. So you're gonna need a lining fabric. You're also gonna need your outer fabric, which I recommend using like a canvas, something durable. You could even use a lightweight denim as long as it doesn't have like super stretch to it. Um, so mine is a canvas fabric on the outside. And then of course we've got our quilting cotton or fabric of your choice <laughs> for the lining. And then you need some thread, of course. So we're going with our Road Trip Machine Embroidery Palette, which comes with all the thread that corresponds with the design collection that I showed you a second ago that took me a while to, you know, find for you. Um, so six spools of thread. They will be in all the colors that you see here for these great designs. And then you also need a construction thread. So you can use Sulky Poly Deco is what I like to use. It's nice and strong. It's a 40 weight thread. You can also use a 50 weight cotton thread. That's sort of our, our more all purpose type thread um, for constructing the bag. And you wanna just choose a color that matches your outer uh, you know, heavy duty fabric, or you can choose a contrasting color that coordinates with your lining and bring those colors into the outside. Um, Susan says, would a waterproof canvas work for the inside? Um, I haven't seen waterproof canvas, but like a, maybe a laminated cotton on the inside or an oil cloth on the inside. And then you could use it as a swim bag and throw your wet items in there. And then after you take them out, when you get home, just turn your bag inside out until it dries and you're good to go for next time. So I think so, yes. All right, so we need two rectangles of our outer fabric, two rectangles for our inner fabric or lining fabric. You also need all of your threads for embroidery for stabilizing this heavyweight fabric for embroidery. We're gonna use Sulky Stiffy Stabilizer, which is a heavyweight tearaway stabilizer variety. That's what I like to use with heavier weight denims, canvases, things like that, um, because then you don't need multiple layers and it's just really easy and nice to work with. We also need some KK2000 because we're not gonna hoop our heavyweight fabric. We're gonna do hoopless embroidery techniques so that we don't harm our heavyweight fabric or harm our hoops. Sometimes when we try to hoop something that's a little bit too heavyweight for our hoops to fit together, you can actually kind of um, not really bend the hoops, but they kind of get a little askew or wonky, and we don't want that at all. If you have a magnetic hoop, you can certainly use it for this project. In fact, in fact, I recommend magnetic hoops all the time because they're so easy to use. If you're interested in those, we have them at sulky.com as well. And to see if they're compatible with your machine, you can go to the magnetic hoops and then there's a drop down menu for your machine brand make and model so you can see the hoops that are available for your machine and they communicate with your machine just like your standard hoops so once you click it into place your machine knows what size hoop you just put on and you can go through your hoop menu to find the correct size 
and it will speak to your machine module in the same way. They're so amazing. All right, so hooping. Let's just get into the embroidery first and foremost. So after you choose your chosen design and load it onto your machine, we want to include the based around design function. This is gonna help as a placement aid for the design. I find that when I am embroidering something where I don't necessarily want this design to be in the center of my rectangle because we're gonna box the corners so that it has a little bit of shaping to it. And when you put your box of graham crackers in there, it kind of sits nicely on, you know, the table or next to the, you know, next to the s'mores, goodies, what have you, without kind of falling over. If we had a seam just running along the side without the boxed corners, and then you put your box of graham crackers in there, you, you see where I'm going with it. It just doesn't hold its shape as well. So we're going to box the corners, which is going to affect where the center of our rectangle is. Everybody following me? We also have our drawstring upper edge. So what we want to do as far as deciphering where to place our design is to mark where we're going to add our casing and mark our allowance for the boxed corner. Then we can center our design between those two points rather than centering it along the entire rectangle. So all of that is explained in the blog post as well at blog.sulky.com. But to help us with that placement, we are going to baste around the design before we load that design um, onto the stitch out screen in our embroidery machine. Now, yours might look a little bit different. It might be called something else. You may only have the option to baste around the hoop. See how I have two options here for basting? I can baste around the design or baste around the hoop. If you can only baste around the hoop, do that as well because it's a safeguard for making sure that our fabric uh, stays with our stabilizer during the stitch out as well. All right, so as I mentioned, we're gonna be using Stiffy Stabilizer. And since it does not have a sticky backing to it, you know, we do have our Sticky Plus uh, Tearaway Stabilizer that of course all of you know I love to use. Um, Stiffy is a little bit heavier weight than that. That's why I chose it for this project. And we're gonna make it sticky by using Sulky KK2000 Temporary Spray Adhesive. So instead of it just having the sticky already, we are going to make it sticky so that we can add our canvas fabric over the hooped stabilizer, based around the design, and then sew it out. And we don't have to hoop our fabric. All right. Esther is asking, how do you get your Epic 2 to recognize a dime hoop, which is our magnetic hoops? Um, it recognized it as soon as I put it onto the machine module. Uh, they play together nicely as long as you get the correct hoop for your brand of machine. That, that was my experience. Okay. All right, so we're going to hoop only the stabilizer, but now we need to do our embroidery placement on one of our outer fabric rectangles. So as I mentioned, I marked my upper edge casing allowance and lower edge boxed corner allowance. And then I drew center cross marks horizontally and vertically to denote the center of where I wanted to place my embroidery. That might be smack dab in the center of the rectangle, or it might be somewhere else depending on where you want your design to be. I wanted mine closer to the bottom See how it's closer to the bottom? That way it doesn't interfere when I have all this gathering up at the top, I can still see the design really nice and crisp and clearly. If it were a little bit higher, when I gather the top to close it, it's gonna kind of get lost within those little folds, okay? 
All right, so after I did the center cross marks, I know that my design is about four inches by four inches, right? It kind of fits within that four inch square. So I simply drew a four inch square using a removable fabric marker right on the right side of my rectangle. See how I've got my center cross marks and then I drew my square around it. So I want my design right there within that box. Now I'm going to adhere my fabric rectangle to my hooped stiffy stabilizer using some KK2000. KK2000 is an air soluble uh, spray adhesive. So it dissipates in the air after about 48 to 72 hours. And it's the most eco-friendly uh, spray adhesive on the market. And if you saw our uh, So What episode last week where we did our Sulky Bingo, because it's the Sulky 36th anniversary, so we celebrated with a bingo game, um, Jason Prater, the president of Sulky, came on and told us a lot about Sulky products, the history of Sulky, and it was really fascinating stuff. So he talked a lot about KK2000 and how it is eco-friendly and all kinds of technical jargon that I don't share with you all, uh, all that often. <laughs> I'm more of the creative side. Okay. <laughs> but at any rate, it's a really great product for quilt basting. Um, and I use it all the time in machine embroidery. So just give it a little bit of a spray on the wrong side of your fabric rectangle, and then you're going to center it or line up your horizontal and vertical um, markings with the markings on your hoop. Okay. That's not always the center of your hoop, right? So I have one of my hoops right here and you can see my hoop markings. Well, this is a good point. I had it upside down. The markings, the little notches on my inner hoop are not totally centered, um, along the hoop, uh, length, right? Now, your up and down lines are pretty much always along the center in my experience, but these ones always can kind of vary a little bit, whether they're in the center or not. So instead of centering your fabric, you want to use those marks as a guide. And if you happen to have your inner hoop upside down, then notice how my horizontal marks are going to be in the wrong spot for my design registration. So you want to make sure when you look at your inner hoop, if there's markings on it, you want to be reading those right side up. Right now, this is telling me it's a 260 by 200 hoop, but those numbers are upside down. That tells me my hoop is not oriented properly. And so if you're using these as placement tools, you could be a little bit off with your design. So that's the first thing to think about. Second thing to think about is making sure that that four inch square that you drew is in the right spot now that you've adhered your fabric to the stabilizer. And since we're using a temporary spray adhesive, it's really easy to lift up your fabric and move it and then just use your hand to pat it down again into that spray adhesive. So it's repositionable, no problem if you need to make some adjustments. So after I get it on the hoop, I do my based around the design function. And those stitches should match up almost exactly with my four inch square that I drew. So now you can see my basting box is just a little bit beyond the four inch line but that box is totally centered where I positioned my markings. All right, so now we can move forward with our embroidery design. If you noticed that the square that you marked is, you know, off center or it doesn't look right now that you've done your basting box, it's very easy to remove your hoop from the machine, remove those basting stitches, 
reposition because now your stabilizer is going to have some slight perforation marks from the basting line. So now you can move your fabric exactly over that square and you don't have to redo your basting stitches if you don't want to, but you certainly can and just start your whole design over and recheck your placement. I feel like design placement is the biggest hurdle with machine embroidery because let's face it, once we get our fabric on the hoop, it's just a matter of pushing buttons and the machine does the rest of the work for us. So this is the most important part, making sure it's placed in the correct spot. If you're still nervous about getting perfect placement, you can always cut your outer embroidered rectangle much larger than you actually need it. And then you can trim it to size after your embroidery is complete. And when you're working with a really stable fabric like canvas or denim, um, even though it's a woven fabric, you can kind of get away with shifting your uh, rectangle ever so slightly so that your design looks centered. Um, that's probably against a few people's school of thought, but I've done it a million times. And um, especially with a project like this, it's really not going to make or break it. Now, if you're working with a garment and you want embroidery on the sleeve and you're working with a woven fabric and you recut the sleeve, it could fit a little strangely on your sleeve if you, you know, if you have to center your design in that way. But with something like this drawstring pouch, I give you full permission to, you know, square up your rectangle after embroidery if you need to. Also, the dimensions of this pouch can be completely changed depending on the size that you want. So once you learn this method, you can make smaller drawstring bags. If you have a birthday party or a baby shower or something where you're going to be giving away uh, some party favors, you could make smaller pouches like this out of different materials, add a monogram for each person's name, and you know fill them with candy or trinkets or goodies. So once you learn this method, you can totally change these dimensions trim it down if you need to, and no problems there. All right, let me see if I can find where I left off. Um, that's not there. It's not there. All right, so we did our basting box, and then we are simply going to begin the stitch out. This is such a cute, cute design. Um, it's got our cute little campfire and our little marshmallow stick, and then the words s'more time. So follow your color chart that comes with your designs. And then we need to remove our basting stitches. And I love using my curved tip squeezers for this. As you know, I have three pairs of these. <laughs> I try to keep one next to my sewing machine at all times. They are spring loaded, so they're really easy to use. They don't cause hand fatigue if you have arthritis in your thumb like I do or somewhere else, they're really user friendly. They also have this curved tip to them so that when you go in to clip these jump threads, you don't accidentally poke any of the other stitches or the fabric itself when you're trimming up jump threads and trimming away those basting stitches. So these are relatively inexpensive. If you are grabbing some stuff up at sulky.com and you want to get to that free shipping threshold, um, I highly suggest put one of these in your cart because you can always have one elsewhere. I like to also keep one in my sewing on the go travel bag if I'm doing hand work on the go, on the airplane, on a road trip. Um, they're really great for just clipping threads if you're doing hand work as well. So. Just something to think about when you're going in to do those jump threads or those basting stitches are the curved tip squeezers. Once our embroidery is complete, we're going to remove that stiffy stabilizer from the hoop and we are just going to tear it away from the wrong side. You want to make sure to clip up some of those stitches, your bobbin stitches on the wrong side as well so that you can get a clean uh, tear from your stabilizer and you can see how nicely it comes away from our canvas fabric. 
All right, so now that our embroidery is complete, we can construct this bag and you will be amazed how quickly this goes together. I really think, depending on your embroidery design and how long that takes to stitch out, you can probably sew this in 30 minutes. I mean, maybe. Uh, if you have all your materials ready to go, I don't see why not after your embroidery is complete. So it's definitely, um, let's just call it like a 30 minute sewing project and be done with it. <laughs> all right, so you're gonna have your two rectangles of lining fabric, your two rectangles of your outer fabric. There we go, make sure they're cut to size. And we are going to sew, let me, let me jump back a minute. We're gonna sew the long edges and the lower edge of just our outer fabrics first. And then we're gonna box those corners. When you box the corner, what happens is you flatten each corner so that your side seam and your lower edge seam are matching. So you kind of pinch that corner together, match those seams so that when you do have your boxed corner, you have this continuous line, right? Going across the bottom edge of your project. Okay, so smush that together, flatten it. You can put a couple of pins and make sure that your seam allowances are pressed open. That's just gonna reduce some bulk along this lower edge boxed corner. So now we're going to mark and measure across that corner. And I can't remember, it's about two and a half inches or so across, um, and maybe an inch and a half or so from the point, or an inch from the point. All of these, uh, specific measurements are in that blog post for you as well. If you want a deeper drawstring bag, you would simply draw a longer line farther away from the point. So you can kind of experiment to see how much of a base you want your drawstring bag to have. So we're gonna mark along our corner and then we're gonna stitch along the corner. It's as simple as that, making sure that our seam allowances are nice and pressed open. Then we're gonna trim away that excess corner um, about a quarter inch or even a half inch away from the stitching line. And that again is going to reduce the bulk that we have along that corner. So there we go, it is sewn, it is trimmed at a half inch seam allowance. And then we're going to repeat for the opposite side, and we're also gonna repeat for the lining. However, for the lining, we're gonna use a little bit deeper seam allowance. Um, that is so that our lining fits nice and snug into our outer drawstring bag. And we also need to remember to leave an opening for turning um, on the lower edge seam of the lining. All right, so the lower edge seam, you want about a five inch opening for turning, depending on the size of your drawstring bag, of course, but you wanna be able to fit your hand in there so that we can turn the whole thing right side out. So whatever is most comfortable for you, but be sure to leave that opening in the lining along that lower edge, okay? Once we do that, we're going to place our outer bag into our lining bag so that right sides are together. So you can see my lining has not been turned right side out and my outer bag has been turned right side out. So now we can insert the outer bag into the lining bag, making sure to line up all of our side seams and both lower edges. And we wanna make sure our upper edge is matching. All right, so stuff that in there and make sure that your boxed corners are fitting nicely together. And then you can add a bunch of wonder clips or even pin that upper edge. And you can see I've clipped those side seams so that my seam allowances stay open. Now, if you're using quilting cotton fabric, which is what was recommended um, in the tutorial, then you're gonna have a, a little bit crisper 
uh, seam, but you can also spray um, a little bit of spray starch, um, like if you use Best Press, I like that product as well. You can spray that when you're uh, pressing open the seams and they'll lay uh, a lot flatter for you as well. All right, so match up all those seams. We're gonna sew the upper edge and you might find it helpful to uh, remove your uh, sewing machine caddy so that you're using the free arm of the sewing machine especially if you're working on a smaller drawstring bag. This one is um, quite large, as I mentioned, so you probably don't need to do that, but if you do make a smaller one, you might find that uh, using your free arm is a little bit easier to manage sewing just that whole upper edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. And after we do that, we need to turn our bag right side out through the opening in the lining. So you can see I'm just grabbing the outer bag through the opening, and then we're gonna have this tube looking thing, right? After we do that, we're gonna sew up our uh, opening in the lining. So just fold those seam allowances toward the wrong side. You can clip or pin it in place, and I just top stitch it on the sewing machine because let's face it, it's the inside of the bag and nobody's going to see if we top stitched that seam. We are the only ones that will know. But if you would rather hand sew it, you can also just do a quick whip stitch um, and it'll look uh, more seamless than a little top stitch if you prefer. So either way, we need to close our opening. And before we do that, just make sure that you go in there with your hand or a turning tool is really great for this. Where's my favorite turning tool? Um, I don't know. You can also, I've got various things. You can use, if you have um, a small quarter inch ruler, this is really great for because um, it has this little blunt tip to it. You can go in and just slide that along all the seams. You can give it a little bit of a press. If you have a point turner, you can use that to smooth along all the seams, making sure that they're nice and flat. Whip stitch or top stitch your opening shut. And then we are going to top stitch that upper edge seam after we push our lining into the bag. Okay, and I think I have a picture of that as well. No, nope, this is more top stitching from the right side. So anyways, after you close your opening, you're gonna just push the lining into the outer bag, and now it will basically be complete except for our drawstring casing. So after we have both bags acting as one, we're gonna to top stitch our upper edge seam so that it is nice and crisp and flat. Now we're going to add our drawstring casing. All right. So I like to mark my stitching lines for the casing so that they're nice and straight all the way around my bag. You can certainly eyeball this if you happen to have a seam gauge um, that you can attach to your presser foot or something like this, then perhaps you wouldn't need to mark it. Um, but I just find that when I start going around in a circle, I kind of, you know, Ver I, I veer off course, okay? <laughs> so I like to mark this with my fabric marker. And you're just going to mark two lines to act as your casing. And you want it about two inches or so from that upper edge top stitching line uh, so that you have a nice, you know, flange um, above your casing seams. So you'll mark the two lines uh, for your casing and then simply sew along the lines. And I like to start a little bit away from my side seam. A lot of people like to start sewing directly in the side seam because they think it's um, inconspicuous, right? So your starting and stopping point will kind of sink into that seam. But I find that that can actually be a little bit troublesome, especially when you're working with heavier weight fabrics and we've got, you know, our seam allowances are pressed open and there's just some bulk going on there. So I start a little bit away from there, go all the way around 
and then meet up with my stitching and do just a tiny little back stitch to secure. So do that with both of those casing stitching lines. And now we need an opening for our drawstring. So we're gonna take our seam ripper and undo about three or four stitches just inside of our casing stitching line. Now the casing stitching line, this is along our side seam. Another reason why we don't wanna start and stop our casing stitching along that side seam because now we're gonna go in and rip out a couple of stitches and we will have back stitched a little bit along each side seam so that uh, when we remove those stitches, they are still attached by, all, by our casing stitches. Does that make sense? So we're gonna go in with our seam ripper and very carefully just undo the stitches inside of those two casing stitching lines. And we're gonna do this on both side seams because we're adding two drawstrings, right? This is one and it goes in and around and out. So this is one piece of rope. And this is the other piece of rope. It's gonna go in and out the other way so that when we grab them both, they cinch the top of the bag. All right. And I found this cording just in the at the fabric store where you would find the trims by the yard, the ribbons by the yard. That's where I found this cording. Um, you could use some different kinds of rope. You could even use ribbon, to be quite honest, and just make sure to finish the ed ends in some way. For these, I just knotted them after I inserted my cording, but I'll get to that in just a moment. So after you have undone the stitches, notice how I have a safety pin attached to the end of, my, of one of my casing ropes but I also have the end wrapped in clear tape. If you don't do this and you're using a rope like I did, it's going to start to fray. And when you work it through your casing, it's gonna fray worse and worse the further you get around. Um, and your safety pin could come out because it's fraying and you're just, you're losing length, right? So simply, right after you cut it to, to length, uh, wrap some clear tape around it and that also prevents it prevents the fraying and it also gives your safety pin something to hold on to. So now we can use our safety pin to guide it through that casing in one side seam and out the same side seam. All right once we have that done you can see here I'm inserting that safety pin Make sure your safety pin fits within the casing, of course. We don't want to be forcing it um, because you could risk, you know, compromising those seams. And now you can see we're coming out of the same seam allowance opening that we created earlier. So when you get to the opposite end, or the, excuse me, the opposite side seam, just keep going right past it um, so that one rope um, front, you know, beginning and end are matching. Okay. Now we're going to repeat that for the other side. So when you get to the side where this is coming out, you want to feed your other casing right beneath it. So we've got one here and one here, and then you can knot the ends. That's a really easy way to, uh, keep these frayed ends at bay but depending on the rope or trim piece or ribbon or what have you that you're using, you might find a different, you know, uh, you could use fray check or something like this to prevent, um, let's say ribbon from fraying. Um, there are certain trims that you can just singe the ends um, and that keeps them nice and neat and tidy for the life of the project. So you can decide what is right for you and the trim that you're using or the rope or cording that you're using. So now we've got our drawstrings done and in place and our bag is completed. It is just that simple. So now you can start stuffing it with all of your favorite s'mores goodies. I like to use a Reese's for s'mores because <laughs> if you haven't tried that, it's the best. But of course, there are also, you know, I also have a bit of 
tradition inside of me that says I have to use a milk chocolate square. Um, it's the Girl Scout inside of me, I think. But man, if you haven't tried a Reese's S'more, mm, you haven't lived. <laughs> and you can see it's very roomy. It fits all of these full size things and then some. I probably could fit two or three boxes of graham crackers in this bag um, and just stuff it to the gills. So it is very roomy. It's a great size for other things as well. If you want to repurpose it and carry your picnic items to the beach or to the park, you could, you know, put in some uh, plastic wear and be on your way to having a great picnic. Throw in a tablecloth or a small blanket and it's, it's really good size for that. So here it is. It stands up on its own once you fill it with goodies, especially if you're filling it with a boxed item like graham crackers that contributes to it standing on its own. But it's also because of that boxed corner that we created that gave it some dimension and allows it to stand up nicely like that, kind of flattens that lower edge seam allowance for us. So here we have it by the campfire. It's already been used by my family. And if you can find these super long marshmallow sticks, I found these at Hobby Lobby for like two or three bucks. Um, they are amazing. Um, I've used coat hangers. I've used, um, you know, those long sort of skewers that you would use for hot dogs and things that are metal. And I just find that these wooden ones are so great for little kids. They're a lot longer than those other ones as well. So they don't have to get as close to the fire to do their marshmallow. Um, those unfortunately didn't fit in the bag because they are so long, but I just wanted to uh, give you all that tip because they are amazing. Um, someone's asking, what is the size that you cut the rectangles? Um, so unfortunately I cannot remember, but all the instructions are on the Sulky blog with all the dimensions and everything you need to know at blog.sulky.com. And we will put the link directly to that blog post um, in the description of today's post. Normally I have a tape measure right next to me and whenever I need it, it's not right next to me. So bear with me a moment and I'll tell you the finished size because I can't remember. And again, if you want your boxed bottom to be a little bit deeper, that will affect the size, of course. Um, so let's see. It is about 19 inches tall from the lower edge seam. So, you know, if it's standing up, it, it won't be as tall. By about, I want to say 14 or so inches. So it is a really good size bag. You could definitely make this smaller for your s'mores, but I like to have a little extra room. You could put some more snacks in there um, and things like that. Great idea from somebody to use laminated cotton or oil cloth on the inside, which makes it really easily cleanable, but you can also just throw this in your washing machine um, since it's made out of just a canvas fabric and ideally a quilting cotton fabric. But if you're like me and you're breaking the rules and you get a flannel, I think you'll be okay as well. Um, just don't have it right on top of the fire uh, like I'm showing here in this photo, <laughs> obviously, for obvious reasons. Don't put anything there. All right, and here it is again with all of our stuff out and uh, ready for roasting marshmallows. So yeah, as I mentioned, mine's already in use. So that's really great when something um, resonates so well with your family, they wanna use it right away. I think they wanted to use it right away as an excuse to eat s'mores, but you know, that works as well. So I'm gonna go through the comments and see if we have any questions we need to address. If I don't address your question today and you need an answer about this project or any of our Sulky products at all at sulky.com, you can always email us at info at sulky.com and we will get right back to you with the answer. All right, can the pull cord be made to turn it into a backpack? Um, Yes and no. I would think you would need it to attach to that lower edge in some way so that, you know, it hung, it, it would hang correctly on your back. 
But speaking of backpacks, if you are interested in a bag that is worn in that way, I happen to have a couple that are hanging right in front of me. Um, these are also projects that already exist at sulky.com. So this is a project from the blog and it um, uses our summer dress code flip-flops design. So this is like a backpack. So you can see it's got the drawstring at the top and then it has these reinforced grommets along the lower edge and these pull cords, right? So that you can use it as a backpack but you can also carry it, you know, so many different ways. Um, so this is just another option. This is also made out of nylon fabric. So super uh, water resistant, great for a swim bag. Um, and it's fully lined as well. Unlike those like promotional bags that you get that kind of look like this. This has really nice grommets, reinforced ones with faux leather and fully lined with a double layer of nylon fabric. So it's gonna last a lot longer than those promotional ones. So if you're interested in a backpack type drawstring bag, you can find this tutorial on the blog as well. Um, we can also link to that in the, in, uh, the comments as well. Um, another backpack that we have that is also water resistant, this is a pattern at sulky.com. It's called the day pack pattern, the explore more day pack pattern. And this is good size as well. It has handles on the top, but it also has backpack straps. And these ones are fully adjustable as well because we've got this buckle slide on here um, and a little bit other hardware on the bottom holding the backpack straps in place. This has a cork fabric bottom and waxed canvas is used for the outer part of the bag. Um, I love waxed canvas. It looks very high end. Um, and the more you crinkle it up, the cooler it gets. It really has this sort of faux leather vibe, but it is uh, super durable. And I think it's really cool for like a hiking bag or something like this. This one, you know, we've got our zipper pocket in the front, and it has an oil cloth or laminated cotton for the lining of the pocket, as well as the lining for the entire bag. So really great for, you know, throwing in your, your wet flip flops or your cover up, um, even your damp bathing suit. And then you just open it up to dry it overnight and you're good to go for your next sort of adventure. It also has this magnetic bar that you insert that's really strong that closes the bag. So we don't need a zipper or anything for this part, but we do have our nice detail of our zipper on the outside that goes, it spans almost the entire front of the bag. So it's a really good size pocket as well. You could keep your flip flops away from your other stuff or what have you. So this is another pattern that's embroidered with our Explore More embroidery design, just giving it a little bit of decorative detail. You could also add a really pretty embroidery to the front pocket piece. So lots of different ways to personalize this. And it has pre-made webbing handle. All we do for the little detail on the top is pinch those together and sew them a little bit. And it just takes your regular webbing um, and gives it a little bit of a designer touch to it. and makes it really easy to handle. So if you're looking for some backpack designs, those are a couple of good ones. Um, I think that you'd have to do a little bit more finagling or, you know, modifying to this particular s'mores bag to turn it into a backpack. All right, let's see. Um, people saying love that bag. Please link to this one as well. Yes, we will add those links. Um, I wasn't anticipating showing you those, so I didn't have those links ready, but we'll put them in the chat for you as well. Um, how do you make laminated cotton? Well, uh, there are certain fabric companies that make laminated cotton. Sometimes you can find it in your local quilt shop. 
um, not so much at the fabric store, but they do have oil cloth fabric and that will work as well. Um, it's a little bit stiffer, a little bit, you know, different to work with than the laminated cotton. Um, but you can search for it, uh, and you'll find a bunch of different sources for laminated cotton. It's really cool to work with. Just keep in mind, keep your iron away from it. You cannot press open those seams. You can also, also don't pin through it because pins will compromise the coating of the fabric. So you want to be sure to use those Clover Wonder Clips. We have them at sulky.com. Um, anytime you're using something like the uh, waxed canvas, the laminated cotton, the oil cloth, anything that has a coating to it, you don't want to use pins. Okay, so keep those things in mind. Also for this one, I did use this, as I mentioned, the cork fabric base. Um, but I would say you could go with the oil cloth and use that as the base as well. It's just the cork fabric gave it a little bit more stability and another kind of designer accent. But if you wanted it more of like a rough sack, you know, more casual than that, I guess, um, you could just go with your waxed canvas as the base for this. Um, there's also additional interfacing in here, which is why it, it holds its shape so well and stands up on its own. So this pattern has a lot of great details to it, um, making it really great for, for summertime and going outdoors and packing a lot of stuff and um, still being, you know, stylish and personal. All right. Oh, also with the laminated cotton, there are things like fusible vinyls. We do not make them at sulky.com, but I have seen them where you can take, let's say your favorite quilting cotton fabric and you can fuse fusible vinyl to the right side of the fabric and you're basically adding your own protective coating to it. Um, in my experience, it works pretty well. Um, you do want to practice a little bit before you get to your final pro uh, final yardage. And you might want to pre-cut your pieces first so that you're not wasting any of the fusible vinyl product when you cut out your pattern pieces, you know. Um, but I've had success with it and then I've had some not so successful moments with it where you think it's all fused great, you go and you make your project, and then there's kind of like a bubble that's not quite fused. Um, so, you know, there's always pitfalls before you kind of get the hang of it, but you can make your own using like a fusible vinyl product. And you wanna make sure to get a pretty lightweight one um, so it doesn't, you know, change the hand of your bag, make it so that, you know, you can't use a drawstring because it's too heavyweight. Does that make sense? Okay. Let's see. Is the tote a project available from Sulky? I assume you're talking about the Explore More Day Pack. And this is a, a digital pattern that's available at sulky.com. It's a little more involved than a blog post would be. So it is a digital pattern that you can purchase at sulky.com and you can make one today. All right. Very fun summer project. I agree. Great. All right. Love the purple. And yeah, you can find this um, waxed canvas at various places. I believe they have it at sallytomato.com now in a couple of colors. Um, it's not super readily available, but it's a really neat alternative to like faux leather or leather um, or even canvas. But you could certainly make the Explore More Day Pack out of a heavier weight canvas or denim fabric as well. And you don't have to use the oil cloth or laminated cotton inside. You could use regular quilting cotton and make it a totally different bag. Um, so you're getting the great pattern and the instruction and the method and technique for how it goes together. And then you can kind of choose um, the fabrics. And there's some different fabric recommendations within that pattern as well. Um, finger pressing lam laminated fabric. Yes, that is how you want to press it only with your fingers. Or if you happen to have a seam roller, which I use quite frequently, it's this little... Um, you know, tool, we have them at sulky.com and 
you can kind of press open the seams with your fingers and run this seam roller over that seam and it presses it open nice and flat, especially when your fabric has a little bit of coating to it, it's gonna lay nice and flat. Like this waxed canvas, it has a waxy coating. So once you go over it with the seam roller, it really lays nice and flat. All right. And good idea from Gail. She says, if you use fusible vinyl, you might want to quilt it so you do not have bubbles. That's a great idea. I don't know if all of those stitching lines, depending on how you quilt it, um, if they would interfere with the waterproof ability or the, the uh, water resistant property of the fabric, if you have a lot of quilting lines on it, but might be fine and do the job. All right, seam roller is great. Thank you, Wanda. All right, any excuse for s'mores is acceptable. I agree. <laughs> All right, so I'm not sure if I caught everybody's questions. There's so many to go through. So again, if I didn't get to your question and you need an answer today, please email us at info at sulky.com and we would be happy to assist. And please join me next Tuesday on July 4, where we have um, another edition of So What with a really great summer themed project. Oh, Twyla's asking, where is the pattern for the backpack? It's at sulky.com. So we will make sure to put it in the description of the post here so that you can easily navigate to it. But if you go to sulky.com, it's called the Explore More Day Pack Pattern. So you should be able to find it there as well. All right. Embroidery designs are so cute in this palette. Thanks for bringing that up again because it is the freebie for one lucky viewer who is watching, commenting, sharing, giving me those great emojis, somehow engaging with the post today. Be sure to also... Um, like us on Facebook or subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's the only way I'll be able to contact you if you are a winner. But I will choose at random one lucky person to win the Road Trip Machine Embroidery Collection. And you will get all six of these really cute designs. And you can start making all kinds of drawstring bags personalized for your friends and family. All right. Thanks for joining me today, everyone. Have a great rest of your week, and I will see you on the 4th of July.